All right, so in today's video, we're going to have a look at what's in my camera bag for 2023. First of all, we're gonna have a look at the bags themselves. Then we're gonna look at what goes inside of it. And last but not least, we're gonna have a look at the audio equipment that I bring with me when I'm out shooting. Of course, I will have links to all the gear that I'm using down in the video description. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. All right, so let's have a look at the bag. When I know I have to bring a lot of gear with me, I carry all my gear in the Brevity Jumper. I actually have two of them, one in black and one in this uh, beige color. This is a very versatile bag. You will get these dividers there at the bottom section. Also, it has a dedicated uh, camera access. It can also hold your water bottle and everything that's not camera related goes in the top area. There's a dedicated section and you can also turn this into a regular backpack. And that's actually what I like about this bag. It doesn't look like a camera bag in the first place and you can also transform it into just a regular backpack. I will say though that it is not the most premium feeling backpack and it gets a little tedious on your shoulders after wearing it for quite a while but other than that it looks great and gets the job done. All right so up next is the Wandered uh, sling bag. I got the six liter version in the black color and I do like this bag a lot. I choose this one when I know I will only have like one or two cameras with me and it is super high quality and I just love the way it looks and feels. And last but not least, there is the long weekend sling bag that I picked up recently. This is my bag of choice when I know I will be only carrying one camera and it got these extra pockets here. So it will most likely be a film camera that I will be carrying around with this bag. I went for the purple color in this case because it kind of gives off that vintage look. But yeah, it is a cool little bag that will carry one of your cameras and a bunch of your films. Well, that is it for the bags. Of course, this is not a in-depth review of any of these, but if you wanna see that, make sure to let me know down in the comments below. Anyways, now let's have a look at what is inside. Okay, so first of all, there's of course the CV10, which I'm filming on right now. This is still my main camera that I use for videography. And when I'm out there vlogging, I also shoot a lot of B-roll with this camera. And I actually have a dedicated video on this camera that I will link up here somewhere. So the lenses that I use with the CV10 is the Sigma 16 millimeter when I'm vlogging or the Sigma 30 millimeter for B-roll or this uh, talking hat style of video. I'm a huge fan of the Sigma lenses. I tried a couple of Sony APC lenses, but the Sigma lenses just give off a little bit of a better quality and I do like the colors a little bit better. That said, I still have a few of the Sony lenses here, but what goes in my camera bag will always be these Sigma lenses. All right, so up next is the Fujifilm X-E1 and X-E2. These are some pretty old cameras that I picked up to kind of get into the Fujifilm line of cameras. And to be honest, I immediately fell in love with these two cameras. I used the X-E1 exclusively for black and white photography and the X-E2 for most of my street photography work. I only have one lens for both cameras and that is the kit lens, which is the 18 to 55 millimeter. You will see a bunch of photos from both of these cameras right here on the screen. And I think there's really something special about the Fujifilm system. And I really love having these different film simulations to my disposal. Again, I have a dedicated video on why I've switched from Sony to Fujifilm for my street photography. I will have that linked down in the comments as well. Also, before I forget, whenever I shoot a street photography POV, I have the GoPro Hero 10 tucked on my chest mount. Okay, so when I shoot a video on analog photography, I typically bring with me this little camcorder. It just complements that CVE 10 footage and kind of gives off that vintage vibe. It was also kind of surprising to see what a camera from like 10 plus years ago can actually do. The stabilization in this camera is actually pretty good. And yeah, I overall really just enjoy the look that it gives off. The camcorder is called Panasonic HDC SD10 and it only shoots in full HD, but it kind of adds to the look and feel if you up res it to 4K. All right, so these are the cameras that I bring with me when I shoot digital. Now let's have a look at some of the analog cameras.
Okay, so first up is the Nikon AF600, also known as the Nikon Light Touch, I think in the US market. This is a super compact 35 millimeter point and shoot film camera, and it features a sharp 28 millimeter lens. I bring this camera with me whenever it is some casual photography or when I capture moments being with my friends, but whenever it gets a little more serious, I bring with me the Yashica FX103 program. This is actually my first analog camera that I picked up and I do have a few videos about it on this channel. And to be honest, this is a camera I absolutely fell in love with. I exclusively shoot this camera in aperture priority and I just recently picked up a new lens for it, which is the 35 millimeter Carl Zeiss Distagon f2.8. I have yet to shoot a roll with this lens, so if you wanna see that, make sure to subscribe to the channel. The other lens that I have for the Yashica is the standard Yashica 50mm f1.7, I think. It's a decent lens and I already shot a few rolls with it, but yeah, I kind of uh, prefer the 35mm, especially for street photography, and that is why I have picked up the Carl Zeiss lens. Anyway, I think that is it for the analog department. Of course, again, this is not a full review on any of these cameras, so if you have any questions, make sure to let me know down below in the comments. Anyway, moving on, let's have a look at the audio equipment. Okay, so whenever I'm vlogging, I either use the DJI wireless mic that I'm currently using. That is also when I know that two people are going to be in the video. If not, I will usually fall back to the Rode VideoMic NTG. That is a shotgun mic that you put right on top of your camera. Another option that I sometimes use is the Tascam DR5X. It's definitely a great microphone and it's a cheap alternative to this wireless option. I think the Tascam is only around about 80 bucks or so. While the DJI wireless mic is is 330-ish, at least here in Germany. All right, so this is everything I will have in my camera bag for 2023. So if you haven't already, this is a good time to smash that like button. Also, if you're new here, consider subscribing to the channel. Again, I will of course link all the gear down below in the video description. And if you have any questions on any of the products that I've mentioned, please let me know down below in the comments as well. And that wraps it up for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.